breakfast with the Prime Minister. Well, and 1,140 other people. It wasn't exactly a heart-to-heart over smashed Avo. Albo was in town to deliver a speech at an event for the West Australian. I am delighted to be with all of you this morning on yet another beautiful day in Western Australia. He used his 20 minutes at the lectern to tick the boxes that visiting Prime Ministers need to tick when they venture across the Nullarbor. From my first day as Labor leader, winning in Western Australia was at the heart of our campaign for government. Pay homage to the local billionaire media proprietor. And of course uh, the chair of Seven West Media, Kerry Stokes, who is here with us as well. Talk up the importance of WA to the national economy. Western Australia is helping to power our economy. Our government is going to invest in powering Western Australia. Thank West Aussie workers for digging up lots of stuff. Over 50% of the world's lithium extraction occurs right now in this great state. And beg us to vote yes in the voice referendum. And I am proud to lead a government that tomorrow will announce the date of the referendum to give all of you in this room the opportunity to vote yes. It was a very safe political speech. He didn't colour outside the lines. And then you came on stage. (laughs) 1,140 people, five of them are voting yes. It was my job to show the 31st Prime Minister of Australia is actually a human being. You were hauled over the coals for having a a barn me. It's bizarre. Did anyone see this? The Prime Minister spent 10 bucks on a pork roll and he was castigated on social media for being extravagant with his spending. Now, And the 10, ten bucks, it must be said, is $8 for a pork roll at Marrickville. Now, <laughs> uh, but if you pay $2 extra, you get the pork crackling, well, which you should you if ever you're in Marrickville. Controversial lunch choice aside, the enduring theme of the morning was Albo's refusal to countenance the voice referendum failing. If the voice fails, and this is serious, there will inevitably be calls for you to resign. Is that on the table? No. An unusually serious question from you. Well, light and shade. So Jim Chalmers told me to ask that question. Sorry, Jim. <laughs> Mate, for what it's worth, I make gags about Kerry Stokes and Basil Zemplis, so if they do ice you, I'll hold a place for you down at Centrelink. <laughs> Brave. Won't just be you and Elbow looking for jobs. Twiggy's lost another chief executive. Seriously, the guys in the carpool will be running the joint at this rate. The appropriately named Paul Slaughter is the boss of Andrew Forrest's or maybe Nicola Forrest's agricultural company, Harvest Road. Harvest Road's best known brand is Harvey Beef. (laughs) Paul had been in the job just three years, which doesn't seem terribly long until you compare it to Fiona Hicks' 20-week tenure at Fortescue Metals Group. Paul used to be the boss of Mrs. Max, where he turned the parts of the animal that Harvey Beep didn't want lips and assholes into a pie, or blended it with sawdust to make a sausage roll. If it's not a Mrs. Max, take it back. How many execs has Forrest lost now? Way too many. Something's off. Something is very off. Yeah. It's not uncommon for the departure of a senior staff member to trigger other resignations. I will go with you. New boss comes in, has their own people, that's completely normal, healthy even. That's not the case with the House of Forest. He's losing people in completely different businesses. Harvest Road has nothing to do with Fortescue Metals Group, which has little to do with the day-to-day operations of Fortescue Energy. But the execs are all leaving. When Hick took the top job at FMG in February, only three of the miners' 11-member executive team had been there longer than three years. That's a lot of institutional knowledge and experience walking out the door. We'll see you all again. Sleep tight. You know what? Twiggy needs to take a leaf out of West Coast's book. You can't make the experience walk out the door at West Coast. (laughs) Doesn't matter how bad that experience is. What do you have to do to get sacked at the Eagles? The worst couple of seasons in the history of ball sports and nobody loses their job. Trevor Nisbet and Adam Simpson could shoot Aussie the Eagle (laughs) mid-flight, eat it in the centre square and still have jobs the next day. Andrew Forrest, if you want a CEO that will actually hang around, hire Nizzy. You will need to use mining explosives from cloud break to blast this guy from the chair once he sits down. I'm not f***ing leaving! I'm Ben Harvey. 
For more update, click the subscribe button below.